Hey everyone, I just wanted to show you how I keep data on Google Sheets. Um, I'm going to share all of these as templates so you can use and copy any of the sheets that you think are useful. Um, and the cool thing is you can edit them however you want. So if you have different timelines or different things that you track, you can add columns for that. So the first one is my student information sheet. Um, I use this to keep track of my entire caseload, and here I put in a fake student. So if, if Shannon Smith were one of your students, you'd put her name here. I just do basic goals, like are they language, are they artic, um, basic, basic stuff. Whose class they're in, um, their special ed teacher, how many minutes a week they get, um, when their IEP is due, their previous evaluation date, and their birthday. Um, I want to draw attention to the yellow and red and green. I have these columns set up so they automatically change color based on the dates. So if the IEP is due within the next month, it turns yellow. If the previous eval is um, three years ago, so it's due this school year, it'll turn red. Um, and if the birthday is in the next month as well, it will turn green. Um, that's so that things really stand out for me. So let's say I want to add... A Kyle Smith, he's working on language, he's in fifth grade, he's with Jones, I see him 20 minutes, two times a week. And then on his IEP, let's say it's due, um, it's not due until March, it will not turn yellow. But then let's say it was due in this month it should turn yellow like that. Um, same with the previous eval and the birthday. So they'll change depending, automatically depending on what you put in them. Um, I always have a note section. Sometimes when I just start with a new caseload, it's nice to write which kids have behavior needs or hearing loss or anything kind of exceptional going on. So that's the sheet, pretty straightforward. My next one is my schedule, which um, is completely blank right now, but I color code it based on grade level and um, I see fifth and sixth grade, and they're in completely different wings of the school, so I make one one color and one the other, and I just do that up here. It's um, pretty easy. The next one is my daily plans and data sheet. Um, this is my new way I've decided to keep data. None of my other ways were really working. Um, I keep one sheet per day, so I'm, this might say Monday, and I make a copy of it. So you just go down here, click the arrow, and go copy. Um, then you can make one for Monday, one for Tuesday, and so on. Um, change that back so that you guys can change it. Here you would put the time. So here's my my example. I see from 8 to 8.20, I see Shannon and Nathan. I just write really basic goal areas. And then um, this typically I don't type. You could type it. I print these at the beginning of the week. I print Monday through Friday and stick it in my binder with my materials. And I handwrite in this box what we're going to do. And then I keep data in that box. And then each day when I Medicaid bill, I cross off students after I've billed them. Um, but then I, that way I have the activity we did in the data like right here. And then when I'm done with that day of the week, so let's say after Monday I'm actually caught up and I do Monday's billing, I take it and I put it into an old binder. Um, so I'm not carrying it with me. And if it's if I'm carrying it with me, that means I still need to bill. And that's worked out pretty well. Um, so I have that template. I also had in the bottom, I have it to do during prep. So if you have any downtime, I try and write, like, even if I have 10 minutes, like, what are some things I can do? So I'm focused um, and productive during that time. The next sheet is my evaluation sheet. So this is my list of how I keep track of who I need to eval and when things are due. So let's say I'm going to eval Shannon Smith. When I get consent for her, you just chick click this drop down and you can check it. And then when you've tested, you can check. When you've written the report, you can check. When you've added goals, you can check. Sometimes I write notes like meeting scheduled on, and then you can write like a date, or you might write report due, you know, the different dates. So something like that. Um, you can also add columns if this isn't like the um, kind of the workflow that you do. Um, you're welcome to. You know, you can add a column to the right or to the left um, and edit as you need. Clear all of that out. But that's pretty simple. My last one is my data sheet that I used to use prior to my daily plans and data form like this. 
I used to use this form and I thought I'd include it in case you still take data more in this style. Um, I printed these. I would put the student's name in the date range and I would do only do the date range after I finished the sheet so that I could, when I looked back on it later, I could see what the date range was. I wrote their goals in here. You could even make a sheet for each student. That seems like a lot of work to me, so I just hand wrote the goals really quick. Um, and then each day I wrote down the activity date, the minutes I saw them, circled if it was in class, in group, one-to-one, -one, any data. So this typically was like a plus minus. Um, and then supports, I would circle what kind of support they needed for this activity. And then I would write notes, like visual, verbal, um, if you guys use my speech therapy um, reference sheet that I made um, that does quick percentage calculations on data, um, they also have a, I also included a really nice list of supports that you can provide um, so that you can be really specific in this section. Um, and this prints out really nice on a 8.5 by 11. So that's how I use Google Sheets to organize my caseload, my schedule, and my data. Um, some of these forms I print and some of these forms I just use online, but it's nice to be able to access it from any computer at any time um, and edit things like when my caseload changes. Actually, on this sheet, I have a section at the bottom that I usually write like in transition, and that's for kids that are maybe out of the district or coming into the district or my ebb and flow kids who are kind of here one day, not, not, you know, the next. So then I keep track of them on the bottom, which is nice. So hope that helps, and I will be sharing these templates. So Check them out, use them, let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to make additional ones if you have ideas. Thanks for watching.